Howdy. Welcome to Osgrave Royalty. I am Justin. We made it, fam. We made it to the end of the legendary Osgrave Royalty Season 1 video series. Gold stars all around. We covered Archetypes by Dr. Anthony Stevens. Oh boy. In this video, I just want to chill for a sec and kind of go over what we talked about. Just shoot the breeze with some thoughts, decompress a little, you know, and we'll talk about some further reading that you could do as well as future plans. And I'll have another video on future plans for the channel as well uh, coming or maybe it's already out. Hashtag YouTube noob. So, I really want to hear from y'all. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm recording all of these in advance. Um, so I just got through filming the Transcendent Function video, as if you couldn't catch on from the shirt. But, Yeah, just to vent, vent with uh, my people here. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed doing this. Again, I've never done anything like this, like put together a YouTube series. And look, the thing about me is that I'm really good at getting in my own way. And I had to put this out as soon as possible. I'm very perturbed that I struggled with some of the reading of the quotes and that I didn't like really triple check for typos and stuff. So it kind of threw me off and got, got my words jumbled, you know, here and there throughout some of the videos. And I really hope y'all will forgive me for that. But I'm going to tell you that I'm leaving. I'm leaving them. Uh, <laughs> crazy dog barking. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, apartment living, you know. But anyway, I I, I didn't want to edit them out because I. <sighs> of course, I love talking about archetypes and stuff, but I really wanted this season for y'all to get to know me. You know, how I present things and what I choose to pre present and what I choose to quote says a lot about me um, and my disposition and my values, you know. And yeah, I mean, I could edit these things out and I probably should. Uh, those little nuances like that interruption with the psychotic dog right outside my door for some reason. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm just morbidly authentic. Fuck it. I'm leaving in the air. <laughs> I'm leaving in the ugliness, you know? Um, these are the early days of, of being on YouTube and I don't want to, rush through it. I want to allow myself to be a little foolish in the early days, you know? It's like you don't want to rush through your childhood. Ironically, every child wants to grow up, you know? And I want to grow up as a YouTuber, but but I uh, also very much respect the process. And I did, I did my best with those things in mind. And I could have, like I said, I could have edited the shit out of these and put out some pretty pristine videos, but I got other things to do. <laughs> I got uh, I want I got other topics to talk about, and I think you know, perfect is the enemy of the good, right? And if I get flamed, you know, I don't, I don't know now because I'm filming this in advance. But if I'm getting flamed in the comments for my my oh 
you know, how hard is it to read? You know, just read. You know? uh, I deserve it, you know. But these are the early days. Hashtag I embrace it. So it's kind of my speech. Yeah, I had I had a lot of fun. And the books, the material in this book, again, I've said this before, but it's like it's like that MacGuffin, you know, like the two people unlocking the vault and the treasure that lies within. And again, I've said this before also, but it's heartbreaking that a lot of this stuff isn't just common knowledge. And y'all, y'all know what I'm about to say. Like we live in a left hemispheric world. Y'all, the real ones know what that means. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's refreshing to get a different perspective. And again, the purpose of this channel is to send up that flare, you know, show you all the ideas that I enjoy and maybe I'll get something out of them. Maybe you don't. And what I mainly got out of this, what do I, Justin, get out of, out of all this archetypal stuff? For me, my favorite thing is the language. It's individuation. It's, it's archetypes and their biological roots. It's a paradigm that I can go to to look inward and do actual self-help. And again, I said this before in in uh, the beginning video, I think, the first video is that I'm totally guilty of projection here. They say healers want to be healed, like people who go into the healing professions like therapy and explore like these topics, they're looking for healing themselves. And, you know, I am very guilty of that. I am largely interested in these subjects because I I want to benefit from them. You know, I'm always doing self-work and I'm in the process of individuating, hopefully. And this is part of it. And it's a paradigm you can't unsee or I can't unsee. And look, again, I'm not citing research every line of this. A lot of this is very esoteric, mythological, abstract, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's easier to think in those terms for me than memorizing a shitload of statistics or this and that, you know? And life will punish me and reward me accordingly for holding that disposition. Certainly it has. But I have to have integrity to myself. And, and I, I'm a romantic at heart, and this stuff is very romantic. And I love the drama and the the grandiose language of this subject matter. Yeah. I and so I I really want to hear from y'all in the comments and get a dialogue going. And of course, blame me, you know, give me you know, I'd ask for constructive feedback, but unconstructive feedback is of course your prerogative. But this channel is only going to get better if you package your message well, you know, give me some sugar with the, with the pill, you know, to make it go down better. In the next video series, um, we'll be covering King Warrior Magician Lover by Robert L. Moore. And that's a very important book for me because it was the first book on archetypal psychology that I read. And... It's funny, my mom got me it for Christmas. She just randomly saw it on the shelf and thought that I would like it. And now I'm starting a YouTube channel indirectly because of it. Is that synchronicity, another union term? Perhaps. Um, but yeah, I read that and then 
I fell in love. I was like, I was like, is there anything else on archetypal psychology? <laughs> yes, there is. It turns out. And uh, FYI, if you want to be an above average gold star student, uh, just search Robert Moore on YouTube, and there's a lot of great talks that he has. And if you're like me, you'll fall in love with you know what he's saying. And you know, it's like I've also said what I love about it, Anthony Stevens and a lot of the people in the space in the archetypal psychology space, Robert Bly, Robert Johnson. Jean Bolin, Mary Louise von Franz, you know, all these people, they're great writers. Not in the grandiose way, but in in their simplicity. You know, people, including me, at one point or another, hated pop music, like the pop music structure, like 4-4 uh, four, four time signature. You know, they all sound like nursery rhymes with the basic chord progressions, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine, but there's genius in simplicity. And just because something is simple doesn't mean it's not genius, you know? And I've said this before in other videos in this series that clarity in writing is, in, is integrity. It's... Um, it shows that you care enough about your message that you want to make sure it's communicated as simply to understand as possible. And kudos to all those writers that I just mentioned. Um, they all do that. So we'll go through a little brief rundown of what we talked about. We talked about the Marvel origin story of Dr. Anthony Stevens in his time at the Matera Nursery Center, studying attachment theory and comparing it to the can intellectual uh, draconian paradigm of behaviorism at the time that permeated throughout his academic life at that time. Um, look, yeah, looking at behaviorism versus attachment theory and then finding his way to archetypal psychology when it occurred to him, we can study behavior all we want, but it behavior tells us nothing about the experience of the behaviors. And then to find out that not only is there more to it in terms of the experience of the behaviors, but that there are structures that are inbuilt, that are biologically pre-wired, that serve us in our survival, that nature has anticipated, that there are structures that have evolved just like the eyebrows, just like the hands, that are psychological as well as biological. Just a profound insight. And, you know, we talked about, again, with the biological, like the hemispheres communicating with each other, the left uh, hemispheric side being very logical, language-driven, sequential, and the right hemisphere being intuitive, dreamlike, um, non-rational. Then we talked about some examples of the archetypes, especially the mother, the first archetype that we encounter, and how little boys, sorry, little girls see the have the encounter with the mother archetype as one of recognition and identification, whereas the bo little boys, it's an act of rebellion to separate from the mother. The mother, right, so we, we, yeah, and again, it's not a particular mother or father, right? It's the mother archetypal actualization or the father archetypal actualization. The little nuances of the individual mothers or fathers don't matter. What matters is the is what's happening in the child's mind in terms of being archetypally actualized by the mother or father. 
And we talked about the role of the family, how that serves survival. And we talked about the anima and the animus and the masculine and the female uh, and the feminine. And how those can become archetypally frustrated in childhood and uh, spin out of control in adulthood and wreak havoc in society. And again, to my red, red uh, to my man, manosphere people, you know, that, that struck, that struck a lot of chords. And we talked about the importance of initiation and transformation, um, how all cultures in all of human history have some sort of initiatory process and they serve as a catalyst for archetypal development. We talked about psychic inertia, how it, you know, the, the mind, just like the body, doesn't want to change. And psychic inertia is that kind of psychic homeostasis that keeps us rooted in our thoughts that we have right now rather than evolving and taking on new thoughts. And that initiation and, trans and transformation in the hero's journey, symbolically, they are what the an ancient, ancient cultures used to overcome psychic inertia, to transform, to become better. And we lack those now, frankly. And I didn't get to say everything I wanted to in that video, but there's, a, there's an expression called liminal space and liminoid space. <laughs> if you have, yes, if you have lemons, make liminoid. Yeah. Uh, archetypal psychology humor. I'm sure it'll go viral. But uh, liminal space is like the space I'm in right now as a new YouTube creator. I'm in this... It's also known as sacred space. It's a it's the place where transformation is happening. It's what the alchemists call being cooked. This is I'm in the heat. I'm being heated and cooked right now, and thus I am transformed. And what the purpose of transformation is archetypal development, and initiations serve that purpose and arc because the greater the archetypal development in a culture the greater its chance of survival and thriving and we covered that in the previous video we talked about the shadow archetype and we talked about how archetypal frustration sorry we talked about how lack of encounter with the shadow can lead to becoming a, a barbarian. One, it is the opposite of one who is individuated. It is the one ruled by the shadow. There is no shadow for the barbarian. They are their shadow. They are pure, unprocessed defense mechanisms. And this has societal ramifications because if we're n we're not collectively as 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 humans doing shadow work we have humans that are in charge of nuclear weapons so um we i didn't talk much about this i wanted to talk more about it in the video at the time but in the shadow we mentioned the the game of who is the person that i hate the most <laughs> as a way to do actual practical shadow work. You know, this is actually self-help. Like, this is what you can do. Often they leave the how out of it. But this is, this is, this is the exercise. And you can also play, I think, who is the person I love the most and list their qualities. Maybe those qualities we, uh, I heard... Uh, are being out uh, buried in the shadow as well. There's what's called the golden shadow. And I heard this first from Thais Gibson on the Personal Development School, PDS YouTube channel, which I'll link below, which I've mentioned before. She talks about uh, attachment theory a lot, which obviously relates to what we're talking about. So, finally, we talked about the transcendent function. And... 
basically it's our psychic interaction with the big S self as we live our lives and process our experiences and archetypally actualize and as we transformed as we transform and that the language of the transcendent function is is symbolism it's right hemispheric again these symbols are not arbitrary <laughs> They're not arbitrary. The king, the warrior, the magician, lover, they are not arbitrary symbols. And we'll, t we'll unpack more of that later. Again, this series, not only being a guinea pig, in, was a, like, a, yeah, a guinea pig, not only in terms of YouTube production, the YouTube production side is a new YouTuber, but also um, lays the foundation the the theoretical foundation for the the application to come and when we talk about the king warrior magician lover what we are talking about is nothing less than an incredible tool to do actual self help and you know this has been kind of a challenge that we've been that has been issued by Alan Watts who I've mentioned a lot that his challenge of that how does the self that needs help do the self-help work? You know? This might be a way to do it. I think it is. Um, yeah, I really, I really hope y'all got something out of this. And... I'm recording this in advance, like I've said before. But yeah, I can't help but wonder what <laughs> what'll happen when I make all this live, you know? And again, I, I'm releasing these, as you already know, two videos per week. So we'll see. I'm I'm excited to see <laughs> I'm excited for my future self to see you know what comes of this effort, if anything. If one person got something out of it, I have succeeded. Or if everybody hates me and hates this work, then I've succeeded. Because um, I've learned something, and they have too. And not to get too far ahead of myself here, but yeah, like I said, there's so many books I'd be open to covering. Um the two books from Jean Boleyn, The Goddesses of Every Woman and The Gods of Every Man. Uh, that's coming up, The Archetype of Initiation by Robert L. Moore. Again, the same author of the next book series, King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, that we'll be doing. Um, I'm just completely in love with uh, alchemy and transformation and initiation right now. Like, I'm... It's like all I think. I think I think of everything in terms of that now, and I, I love it. I love that paradigm. It appeals to my romantic nature, and for example, I mentioned this earlier that if you've seen Remains of the Day with Anthony Hopkins, uh, he plays a butler named Stevens, and listen to this, right? The first scene where there's dialogue. And this is knowing, having known about the alchemical language of being undercooked and cooking and being overcooked, right? What that means alchemically when the transformation goes awry, right? In various degrees. Watch that movie, okay? The very first scene where there's dialogue, what does Stephen say? He goes something to the effect of, I'm sorry, sir. It seems the kitchen has burnt the, the toast. <laughs> I don't know if the filmmakers knew, were cognizant of it, but is it a coincidence that the fantastic movie about a character who is insanely overcooked and the first dialogue is about burnt toast? Overcooked toast? Wow. 
again, you can't unsee this paradigm once you have it. And I've just been looking all over the place, like um, in terms of initiation, the Green Knight, the the beautiful. A- I love that movie, um, the A twenty four movie. And uh, that's that's one movie about initiation. It is the initiatory process. And if you want me to do a video on that, I'll, that might be a good challenge. And um, what's the other? What was the other movie? Oh, The Northman, of course. Like when they're doing that uh, ritual with when when the kid and Ethan Hawke and Willem Dafoe are doing those chants, right? At the beginning. That's that's smacks of initiation. And Robert L. Moore's insight, all initiation has to be overseen by a ritual elder. Willem Dafoe, perfect. And then, uh, again in that movie, with the scene with the berserker chant, initiation, they are becoming animals, right? Or it seems like animalistic. They're unleashing that rage. They're going into a trance. And notice that there was a particu- there were particular movements. There are particular raising and lowering of energy. These are rituals that are not arbitrary, that are designed to transform the participants in a specific way, a.k.a. go into that berserker trance, right? Notice, if you do it on your own, it takes much more, you know, mana, much more libido to get into that. But if you have a group, Y'all, you know, if y'all have a ritual, a set of instructions that elicits a certain transformation, it's like a cheat code, but except it's not a cheat code because it's the way that things used to be done. And in that way, we've uh, culturally regressed, I believe. There are very few sacred spaces left, especially for men, who it's the most important for men to have sacred spaces so that they can transform and make society better and be, you know, appealing to women. And women don't have to worry about picking not a good guy if they're initiated. I think that might have something to do with, like, men in uniform and stuff like that. They don't, they're pre-selected, as uh, the Manosphere would say. But now we're all, and we talked about the concept of the puer eternus, the Peter Pan syndrome. Because of the lack of sacred space and the lack of uh, proper initiatory processes, we just float around and combine that with the red pill stuff that men are largely broken women because their main calls to purpose, protecting and providing, have been outsourced to big daddy government. And so archetypal transformation is difficult. It's lacking. But thanks for... uh, Again, thank you so much for sticking with me. It just means so much. Um, I don't know if I'll do like all the recording at in advance, like I did this time. I did twenty two videos in advance and then staggered their releases. Um, There were pros and cons to that, and sometimes like you know, if I put out a video, but maybe there's engagement in the comments that I didn't notice, you know, that I could apply to the next video. I can't really pivot if they're already out, you know? And sometimes I forget what I've talked about in previous videos and what I haven't because I've already filmed it, but y'all haven't seen it, you know? So there's pros and cons, you know? Again, this has been a learning experience. And again, I appreciate your everything, just your time, your comments, your feedback. And, um, Really looking forward to seeing y'all back in King Warrior Magician Lover by Robert L. Moore. That's our next one. So see y'all later. Take care. And I'll see y'all in the next series. Bye-bye.